Aloha and welcome everyone. Uh, this is our second virtual meeting on the Community Development Block Grant for Mitigation, otherwise known as CDBG MIT. I'll be referring to it as uh, MIT and some version thereof. Uh, I'm Zendo Curran, Planning Director for the County of Hawaii, and I am joined by our Civil Defense Administrator, uh, Talmadge Magno. I'll turn it over to him just to say hi real quick. Hi, Talmadge. Thanks, Zendo. I look forward to talking to you guys. Back to you, Zendo. All right, awesome. Yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for a um, bit of an overview. We're going to go through kind of some of the process and whatnot. Then we'll turn it over to Talmadge to talk about uh, various steps uh, throughout the uh, multi-hazard mitigation plan and the hazard assessment, et cetera. And then we'll go through a list of projects. So as I'm already kind of getting into it today, today's the second of our um, two public hearings. Um, really, it's to discuss the CBDG MIT funding and the uh, mitigation uh, action plan, and it's tied and it's ties to the county's uh, multi-hazard MIT hazard mitigation plan. Um, you know, we have the federal funding, it's come through the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, and that's where the CDBG MIT, uh, through the CB, CD, CDBG MIT program. I'm just going to call it the MIT program because uh, CDBG keeps messing me up. Um, on that note, we'll go through the overview. We'll review the county's uh, 2020 multi-hazard mitigation plan and hazard assessment. Um, we'll look at the approach used to identify the uh, MIT programs and projects and the MIT programs uh, selected for implementation. Uh, and we'll talk about the public comment period and next steps on the draft initial action plan. And then at the end, we'll go through um, Q&A. So, you know, on that note, just like to uh, point out that this is, we're not really taking testimony here. This is more, instead, we like to hear, have a discussion at the end and hear your thoughts and more of a collaborative effort uh, here. We, we do encourage uh, public comments in writing uh, and we can, uh, for us to provide to uh, HUD and uh, details on uh, how, how you can do that will be covered at the end. Um, so just some setting some general ground rules. Our participants will be muted throughout the meeting. Thank you for that. Uh, if you have a comment or question, please enter it into the chat box uh, by accessing the chat icon at the bottom of your screen. Uh, comments and questions will be addressed at the end of the presentation and staff will moderate the questions. So thank you staff for being here. I appreciate the moderation. Okay, so overview of the uh, MIT program. Um, HUD has allocated uh, $6.8 million um, to the county for uh, through this uh, CDBG MIT program uh, for uh, mitigation purposes. Uh, the MIT funds may be used for uh, county, count, used countywide for eligible uh, hazard mitigation activities identified in the multi-hazard mitigation plan. Uh, the hazard mitigation plan activities uh, really is meant to increase the resilience to disasters, reduce or eliminate loss, long-term risk, loss of life, injury, damage, uh, loss of property and suffering and hardship by lessening the impact of future disasters. So uh, really grateful that we have this, uh, this program and that um, we actually have this funding. I ultimately think we could use a lot more, but we're, we're really happy that we have this. And we have 12 years to expend these funds. Uh, the goals of the MIT program really are to support um, you know, support the data informed investments focusing on, uh, you know, repetitive loss property and, and critical uh, infrastructure and just real throw that out there real quick. We've been through a lot of this. So I'm kind of going on high level a little bit fast as we covered most of this in our first meeting that is recorded as well. So if you're interested in that, just uh, give us an email and we can get that recording to you. Uh, really to build capacity to uh, you know, comprehensively analyze disaster risks and to update uh, hazard mitigation plans, support the adoption of policies that reflect uh, local and regional priorities. They'll have long lasting effects in our community for risk reduction, uh, including risk reduction to community lifelines and decreasing future uh, disaster costs, as well as maximize the impacts of these funds by encouraging leveraging public, private public partnerships in coordination with other um, you know, federal dollars. Um, okay, so one of the um, one of the criteria for this is that uh, we use fifty percent of the funds must be used in designated uh, to for projects in low to moderate income communities. Uh, this is a bit more challenging than you'd think, and so the areas that you see on the screen right here, uh, Kilo, Puna, and Kau, are the areas that hit those. Uh, other areas are actually. Um, not in the low to moderate income. So um, 
So, you know, North Kohala doesn't fit that anymore. South Kona doesn't fit that. So as our demographics change, this, is, this has changed. Um, so essentially, uh, just kind of go through this really quickly, at least 50% of the program funds must meet the, meet the benefit, uh, must benefit low to moderate income residents by the geographical areas you can see over there. So a household that is LMI earns basically 80% of area median income or less. For example, a household of four people earning 68,500 or less annually is considered LMI or yeah. Uh, a geographic area that is uh, considered LMI has 51% or more LMI residents. So again, in this case, it's uh, Hilo, Puna, and Ka'u. And so again, 50% of those funds have to be spent in those areas. It's not blended around the island. It's not 50% of the funds supporting that's actually in those areas. So uh, the projects that you'll be seeing later uh, meet those criteria. Okay. So the 2020 Multi-Hazard Mitigation Plan. Um, this update in 2020 provides a structure and strategy for managing hazards, ensures the county's eligibility for specific grant funding sources, includes a ranked hazard uh, risk assessment, and identifies specific hazard mitigation actions. Um, you know, at, at this point, actually, what I'm going to be doing is I'll be handing it over to Talmadge because, you know, he's the, uh, he's the true expert uh, for dealing with disasters. So uh, really happy to have Talmadge run through uh, kind of what the uh, hazard mitigation is, what the hazards are, and then he'll be turning it back over to me to go through a bunch of projects. So on that note, Talmadge, I will turn it over to you. Thanks, Zendo. Pleasure. Well, the multi-hazard mitigation plan, um, this is the third iteration for the county. So it's, uh, you know, been a, a familiar document for the county to work with. The main thing is that it, it is necessary for any municipality to have this document to be able to qualify for federal programs and federal monies. Um, as Zendo said, it, it provides a structure and a strategy for dealing with all the hazards that we, uh, we deal with on this island. And so uh, the slides that I'll go through, we'll, we'll go over those, those list of hazards and, and the projects that came about through this multi-hazard mitigate development of the multi-hazard mitigation plan. Um, so we'll go to the next slide. Um, the, the next slide identifies the, let's see, hazard mitigation. So this process was done for each of the hazards that we have identified that we're vulnerable to on Hawaii Island. Now, the plan goes into hazard mitigation and risk assessment thoroughly in the document. And, you know, I'll read it. Hazard mitigation is a use of long-term and short-term policies, programs, projects, and other activities to alleviate the death and injury and property damage can re that can result from a disaster. And to, to get to that point, each natural hazard, each or each hazard, because um, and one is terrorism is man-made, we have to do a risk assessment. The risk assessment is the process of measuring the potential loss of life resulting from natural hazards, as well as personal injury, economic injury, property damage, in order to determine the vulnerability of people, buildings, and the infrastructure to natural hazards. So this is the criteria that we're gonna take forward into the next slide, which shows you the list of hazards, natural hazards that we face on Hawaii Island. Now, this is not uh, actually the ranked list, that'll, that'll come next. But this just gives you an indi indication alphabetically of wor what we're looking at on Hawaii Island. So each of these, there was a working group that was put together in the development of the multi-hazard mitigation plan. You know, these consisted of what we call the experts, the, the authorities, you know, that, that work with all of these hazards, whether it's National Weather Service, HVO, um, you know, fire science folks, Everybody came together, and all and this document was also um, uh, vetted through the public process, 
and, and changes made just so that everybody had their chance to look at this. Well, taking the risk assessment process, we looked at all of these, these hazards and you know, um, and rank them. So the next slide will show us the process that we took. So critical to the, the equation basically is a probability of occurrence. Um, rated on the, the, so I'll use tsunami for the, the example. Tsunamis have been devastating to Hawaii Island. Um, in the past, there has been projects that came forward to to mitigate some of the hazards, but probability is low for tsunami. Fortunately, tsunami has been high impacts to property, um, countless deaths in in uh, several of the events, and and you know it has a great impact to economy as well. Um, on the other hand, you'll see, and I'll explain as we go into the ranking order, um, how occurrence weighs into um, other hazards having a higher rating. So we take the weight of probability, the weight of the impacts, which develops the score and it, uh, it gets its rate ranking. Um, as I said previously, these experts, the professionals that deal with all of these hazards came together um, using their information, the data, the historic data that we have, um, and the ranking on the next slide is, is uh, you know, what came forth. So some of the takeaways from this is that you see the sudden onset hazards such as wildfire, earthquake, hazards that we have no notice um, have, a, have a higher impact um, and a higher occurrence. Um, they impact the vulnerability of people, life safety, property, and the economy. Wildfire, you know, it, it, it'll impact large areas. Like lately, we just said that 40,000 acre fire had to evacuate two communities. But compared to an earthquake, which could impact the entire island, you know, that, that, those are some of the factors we had to weigh in. Um, and then as you drop down, like we're talking about tsunami, low probability, but high impacts, but nevertheless, it rated low. And it rated low because we have programs in place to mitigate, such as the Kaikoua project, which created the green space in Hilo, which, which was devastated. We also have the early warning systems with the National um, uh, Pacific Tsunami Warning Center, the siren systems and messaging. Uh, the county has its plan as far as evacuating people. So all of those aspects were built into the multi-hazard mitigation plan which resulted in the ranking of all of these hazards. So, okay, the next slide. So each of the working group uh, representing the county put forth projects which they propose would mitigate different hazards throughout the island within the county. Um, the microwave network upgrade, and I'll explain that. It is part of the county land mobile radio system, but it's not only that, it is our data system as well. So every county department utilizes it and it serves the public as far as first responders um, in response, um, during emergencies or during routine you know, operations. Nevertheless, we had to upgrade this system so that we can build redundancy in the case that, that uh, systems, reducing the likelihood that systems will go down 
which would reduce the, the communication in the county. So that was rated number one. Um, and you can see as far as the rating, you know, it could, it could qualify for other funding sources. And so that, uh, that kind of helps out as well as, you know, it, it being rated number one and, and being able to achieve this project. Um, all of these projects had bearing on mitigations to hazards, to impacts to the community and to the economy. Of course, our number one priority is life safety. And so, you know, anything that would deal with life safety has a high priority. Um, the microwave system, where it, where it matters to uh, first, first responders and response, communication is critical for life safety. And that was part of its uh, justification as well. Um, so, so you can see this list, we've got, uh, there's a list of, I believe 35 projects that were rated. So we can go to the next page, which will give you um, uh, additional. Um, you can see some uh, we kind of we kind of bypass one that I wanted to point out, but like this one says the Wailoa River Bridge retrofit. The previous page had bridges in it. Critical to the bridges were access to Hamakua Coast. Um, we have limited bridges that cross the Wailuku River. Uh, so the Wailuku Bridge was one of those. The other one was on Wainui Nui, critical access to Hilo Medical Center. So uh, life safety, that, that's all part of it. Um, and we have one more page of, of projects. So I think this takes it back to you, Zendo. It sure does. Thank you, Talmadge. Appreciate that. Appreciate the overview and all the effort and attention that went into this plan. Uh, we're going to talk about the approach uh, used to identify the, the MIT program. So, you know, we have the $6.8 million in uh, MIT, MIT grant funds uh, provided for this unique opportunity. Uh, again, very grateful for that. Uh, the program's projects must have a tie back to the hazard mitigation actions in the multi-hazard plan, which Thomas just went over. Uh, it must identify the benefit to the low to moderate income residents, as I explained earlier, and identify opportunities to leverage other sources of fundings by getting projects shovel ready. Uh, you know, protecting community lifelines. 5% uh, of the funds can be allocated to administration and 15% uh, of the funds can be eligible for planning activities. Uh, this is great because the, uh, the, the, the planning activities really can span island wide. We don't have to so much meet that LMI criteria. So it's some really good uh, impact uh, that went into this, you know, and in going through the, the projects that are coming up, we really wanted to find areas that provided the highest impact, highest values. You saw on the list that Talmadge went over, some of the areas that were identified already received other sources of funding. So again, grateful for that. Um, but really there's a lot of thought and how do we you know, make sure that this has the maximum benefit for the amount of money that's available and meet all the criteria. And uh, it's a little bit more challenging than one would think, but going through that process, and I feel very proud of the process that was went through, we've come up with the following uh, budget summary. So out of the list, these are the projects that have been selected. And I'll go through each one of these afterwards, but this just kind of gives you a general overview and you can see it basically hits right out to the, um, uh, the dollar amount that the grant is for. And um, you know, from here, like I said, I'll go through each one of these and explain a, a little bit more around these. So starting from the top, we'll move to our ArcGIS data management. Um, this, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, we'll acquire and install and configure uh, hardware and software and licensing to create an Arc ArcGIS uh, system capable of posting and managing the data from uh, numerous county departments. The project will provide a single repository for data and provide the ability for departments to manage the data to provide services to the public during uh, steady state conditions and during declared and undeclared emergencies. 
this is a big deal. This covers, you know, the entire island. Uh, GIS is really um, such a critical planning tool and it's really taking the technology that's been there, but we'll be uplifting it and really having it as a tool for the civil defense agency, which again, huge island-wide impact and um, we think it's a great project. Um, the next one will be the Puna radio communi uh, communications infrastructure. And so this is to design and construct the mobile communications facilities at the Helco substation adjacent to Puna geothermal uh, venture facility in lower Puna to replace the facility that was destroyed by the 2018 uh, lava flow. The new site includes a uh, movable uh, equipment shelter and backup generator utilizing the Helco tower for a, a antenna mounting. The county facility will have the ability to be moved out of the path of lava in the event of a new, er a new eruption. An existing uh, MOU or memorandum of understanding with Helco allows us to use the tower for this project design, engineering, construction, and equipment. I do want to point out that uh, the county submitted um, a request to FEMA for this fund, for this project, for this amount of funding due to it being lost in the um, disaster recovery. Uh, we're going through the process right now um, with FEMA and, and we're, we're, we're pushing them and hoping that they will actually fund this process. So the goal is to have them fund it, but we can't take it off the list because it's critical to have this available in this area. This is, you know, right what Tom was just talking about. This is first responders. This is, you know, the difference between somebody making it or somebody not. So this is critical. Um, but what we're really doing, as I said, we're pushing to have FEMA cover this and say feeling feeling somewhat optimistic. Um, and so in the event it does, this funding will be used to um, will be reallocated for shelter capacities, um, basically, you know, either hardening, uh, planning, uh, architecture, engineering type stuff uh, for shelter capacities in the LMI area. So. That's the goal is to get FEMA to fund this and move it into further uh, shelters in our community. Okay, moving on to the next one, we have the emergency power and water infrastructure. This is from the Department of Water Supply. Uh, the program, the hardening of uh, Piyohonua 1 and Piyohonua 3 and Ola'a 3 potable water producing facilities through the purchase and installation of transfer switches and supporting infrastructure, generator, tap boxes, junction boxes, and a bunch of other stuff. Um, we will allow, uh, which will allow the County of Hawaii Department of Water Supply uh, to better protect the health and welfare of the public during prolonged power outages. Uh, an additional project will be an emergency generator with the purchase and installation of transfer switches and supporting uh, infrastructure, OLA 6. And that, that transfer switch is critical, which allows them to basically plug in a generator. If, if the power goes down, they can plug in a generator, switch to switch, and boom, power's up and running again, water's pumping. So again, critical infrastructure to keep things going. Uh, again, project type, design, engineering, construction, see the estimated budget, and uh, moving on to the next one, uh, wildfire mitigation and incidents response. This would be for Hawaii uh, County Fire Department. It would be the procurement of vehicles and equipment, uh, wildland fire apparatus and, and or brush trucks, uh, mobile service trailer, mobile command post. Uh, this is to enhance this incident response and protect community lifelines from wildfire events. Uh, we'll identify the high hazard areas where low to moderate income communities are exposed to wildfires, such as Ka'u, in order to identify and deploy the mitigation measures such as fire breaks and water supply. Uh, we all know how critical this is and we all know how, our, how, our, how hard our firefighters work um, with limited resources. And so this is a really great opportunity to help, um, you know, bolster them and, and support them for all the hard work that they do out there. Really grateful for that. The next one is uh, shelter capacity, and this is for Department of Parks and Recreation. So identify identification of potential uh, evacuation facilities, uh, structures that can be hardened to withstand high wind events. Uh, initial consideration is being given to the Yoku uh, Hazakoa um, Gymnasium located in North Kohala, which is the only district without a wind rated evacuation shelter site. Um, it gets a lot of wind up there. Um, the, the project entails engineering review, design environmental ready, uh, remediation of any hazard materials and permitting process to make the, the site shovel ready uh, once additional funds are secured for the construction. So the goal with this one is to really get it, as, as it said, it stated, uh, to get it shovel ready. Um, and what we're hoping for is additional funding, maybe through the federal government, through the state, maybe through the infrastructure program. So when those funds come in, we have shovel ready projects that of high impact impact in these areas and uh, no doubt North Kohala needs that. 
Um, okay, moving on to the next one. Okay, this one will be um, activity delivery costs. So this is planning department, uh, cost of the MIT program uh, specialist to implement and carry on the CDBG eligible activities across the county's MIT program. Uh, this position will um, partner with departments implementing the MIT funding programs by coordinating uh, the provision of the project management, technical assistant, and grant compliance, uh, developing policies and procedures to administer the MIT projects and funding, facilitating monitoring activities with county departments and agencies supporting uh, procurement, and assisting with environmental review and permitting uh, activities. This is critical. Uh, there's a lot of work that goes into actually administering these funds and working through it. Um, we're seeing this for firsthand with, with other areas where we're, we're dealing with grants and it actually takes a, a lot of effort. So this will be really beneficial to the community as a whole and to the departments to have this, you know, this person there working through all of these issues and really keeping things, um, you know, flowing. So um, now we will move into uh, this activity, which is the 15% kind of component of the, the eligibility to move it around. And this is through the planning side of it. So revisions to zoning and subdivision code uh, to bring these up to uh, much better standards as part of the department-wide effort to update the county's zoning code and subdivision codes, chapter 25 and 23. Uh, the planning department is looking for specific funds to include land use analysis, strategies, and regulatory enforcement tools to directly mitigate against the range of natural hazards. Obviously, this is very critical with uh, climate change really coming to the forefront uh, in the world. This is the time to start really getting um, strategies and uh, regulatory components embedded in our code uh, in a multiple ways, you know, whether it be uh, reducing the amount of carbon we use in areas or, you know, hardening of areas or general policies on uh, movement out of uh, critical areas. So it'd be really great to, uh, to have this again, huge island-wide impact as well. Now, moving on to the next one, we'll be working on some uh, flood studies and assessments. This will be with the Department of Public Works. Uh, the goal is to perform needs assessments on coastal and riverine uh, flooding uh, hazards to identify flood control projects, policies to mitigate against flood hazards, such as amendments to flood insurance rate maps. Uh, initial consideration is for the District of Puna with North Kona and South Kohala vicinities also recommended for studies. All three districts were identified in the 2020 multi hazard multi-hazard mitigation plan. The county aims to partner with U.S. Army Corps of Engineers to conduct a flood study for Puna through its planning assistance to states and programs such program with the MIT funds as, as the non-federal share. So again, very grateful for this uh, planning study. You see the areas and the budget. That covers all the projects from top to bottom. Um, so the public comment period, uh, public meeting was held on October 19th, uh, 2021, discussing the multi-hazard mitigation plan and the CDBG MIT program and proposed uh, project selection criteria. The draft initial CDBG MIT action plan was released on October 25th, 2021. You can get it there at the website. In a 45 day public comment period to, sol to solicit public input on the initial uh, CDBG MIT action plan runs from October 25th to December 21. That's a, basically that 45 day comment period, which we are right in the middle of. So to comment, uh, you can uh, email us here at this email address, CD cdbgmit at hawaiicounty.gov in person at the planning department in Hilo. Uh, and I will all say in person at the planning department in Kona, if you'd like, and by US mail uh, to the address provided here on the site. The next steps after the 45 day public comment period concludes on December 8th, 2021, the county will review and respond to public comments received. The county may make updates to the draft initial action plan based on the comments as necessary and guidance from HUD. The county must submit the initial CDBG mid action plan to HUD no later than January 6, 2022 and HUD has 45 days to approve it. Once the mid action plan is approved by HUD, the county receives the funds through the grant agreement with HUD. 
and then we are moving forward. So now we're going to move into Q and A. Again, contact information. Uh, really appreciate everybody listening, and happy to answer any questions. Uh, it's been a really great process working with the team, working with Talmich, and um, yeah, happy to answer any questions. Okay, I've got one here. The Hamakul Coast is subject to all top six of the highest rating for risk assessment. Okay, there is no shelter capacity. I would like to propose a shelter facility be built in Papaloa Park, which has the space and is the closest hub location for the communities of Ocala, La Pohoihoi, Papaloa, and Ninole. So one of the challenges that we have is the amount of funding. Well, $6.8 million is, is a lot of money. Uh, in this realm, as you can see with the budgets, it's not as much as we would like um, to really be able to harden the structures. We're also challenged with, as I talked about before, the, the low to moderate income uh, situation. And those areas actually don't meet the LMI. And so there was a lot of, um, thought and process that went into trying to get the most island-wide impact, but also meeting the criteria that was outlined through the process. So I know that those are on the table as far as the need for sure. I just, I think through this, we can certainly consider it, um, but we're challenged by some of those criteria that we have right there. Even the one out in North Kohala doesn't meet that criteria, but again, it doesn't have anything out there like that. Um, Got another one. We can, can funds be designated to plan for a shelter that could hold and handle the capacity for four communities? Uh, my initial thought, and Talmud, you could jump in on this if you want to. My initial thought would be yes. Um, I think it'd be based on pro, you know, proximity and the nexus, but it still it comes back down to this LMI criteria. And I think if we had a lot more funding through this, you would see a lot more actually hardening of the structures. And right now, based on the need that we have, and again, meeting that criteria, um, we're challenged uh, to do that. But I think in the, in the grand scheme of things, we should be you know, looking at that, looking at um, how we can gain um, you know, additional synergy around this. And you know, that's kind of one of the things doing with you know, the uh, the, the covered play areas and whatnot, where you can actually have those hardened, so you get a, a more um, use out of those. Um, not sure if you have any comments on that, Talmich. Sure, Zendo. As we look at the communities, um, we take into consideration the the DOE sites as well. Um, you know, Hamaku has got a number of those that we'll rely on, as well as county facilities in in Honoka'a. Uh, you know, I. I understand we do not have the capacity island wide to shelter everybody. So we, we kind of rely on um, the building codes, the new, the new construction. You know, we say people that have uh, the newer construction better to shelter at home. Um, you know, we understand that a lot of these communities have, you know, these, these older um, communities because of the nature of, you know, what existed before the plantations and so forth. So, um, we look at the whole spectrum as, as far as what's available for sheltering and, you know, um, like we mentioned before, North Koala has nothing. And, and what, what came to mind was when uh, Hurricane Douglas was, was approaching and, and was going to be skirting the, the north coast of the Big Island. And we realized this fact, these people in Koala would have to travel across the mountain road to get to Waimea to the nearest shelter. And, um, and so we, with that, um, Hisoka Gym became our priority. Um, so uh, we try to consider everything. Really do, and not, nothing like another, you know, $100 million wouldn't fix right now, Mitch. I mean, the, right. we have a lot of, we have a lot of needs and, um, you know, limited resources. So really one of our challenges in our jobs is to really, how do we get the biggest bang and impact out of these? And that's really what we came to with, um, you know, this process. Okay. And, you know, we're always looking for, you know, 
uh, additional funding and we're hoping with the infrastructure plan uh, we'll be able to take advantage of that as well and one thing that's kind of exciting out there is there's a concept out there being that not everything has to be shovel ready but maybe shovel worthy so i'm excited about the potential that we have coming up and we will uh, stay abreast of any funding and do our our, our very best to um, get that funding and utilize it to its best ability and collaborate with all of our partners in the county and communicate with the community and get the feedback as, we, uh, as we're trying to do right now and as we continue to do and always trying to improve our, our communication to the community uh, through all of these processes. I'm um, just gonna check if there's any additional questions out there. Okay, I am seeing none. Um, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, really want to th thank Talmich. Uh, appreciate working with you. Appreciate the partnership and all that you do. Uh, if you have any, uh, you know, written comments, please submit them. Again, that's cdbgmit at hawaiicounty.gov by December 8th. We appreciate those comments. Thank you to the tech team and support. Thank you for all that are, are watching. Thank you for participating. And if you're watching this on the video, we appreciate that as well. And um, appreciate all of the, the understanding and uh, uh, attention that goes into these. So again, with that, we'll close out. Uh, Zendo Kern, Pine Director for County of Hawaii. Thank you all very much. Have a great one. Aloha.